In this tutorial of the UDK Lightmap series, I will show how to create a second UV channel specifically for lightmaps and what to keep in mind when you're laying out your unique UVs for the lightmap. The UVs for lightmap have to be laid out very differently than they do for a texturing UV channel. So here is our wall and let's open up the UV texture editor. I have it saved to my shell but you can get access to it by going under window UV texture editor. In here, right now, we have two UV channels. You can check by going under UV sets, and we have map one, which is for texturing, and the second one, which is for light map. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete the light map channel. So we can go ahead and go under polygons within the UV texture editor and delete current UV set selected. So all we have is one. You can do the same thing by going up to under polygon menu create UVs and you can do the same functions through here. Now that we have just a single texture in UV, uh, we need to create a new one. This UV will be used for the light map. So by selecting the object, we can go to create UVs, you can create an empty UV shell, or you can copy the current UV shell to the second light map channel. This will take your texture in UVs and it will copy them over so you don't have to start from scratch. So first let's create an empty UV set. Let's open up the UV texture editor and here we have map 1 and light map. Now I named light map that way I know what I'm working with and uh, the way you can do so is when you create an empty UV set you go to options and you can create a UV set name. This is just a name, it doesn't define if it's a light map or anything, it's just for visual purposes so I know which channel I'm working on. So right now we are in the light map channel in the second UV set and we have nothing. That means we have to manually lay out the UVs. Now the common technique that I see is, and I've done this before many times and that's why the light maps that I created never worked properly, is what I used to do is I simply created a new UV set and I want to create UVs and I just chose automatic mapping. This automatically UVs all of my faces, all of my UVs for the object and splits them up and lays them out nicely. Now in theory and ideally this is how light map UVs should work. Each UV for the light map has to have unique space within the UV layout. You cannot have any UVs overlapping. But the problem with UV automatic mapping is it doesn't take into consideration what these UVs will be used for. It doesn't take into consideration the padding that has to happen in between each UV shell to avoid bleeding. And it doesn't take into consideration optimizing the space where the UVs laid out in order to maximize the light map resolution. The light map resolution tends to be very small compared to a texture resolution. So for a small enough object you may have 16 by 16 pixels for the light map for that object. So you want to use as much possible space within the UV layout for your light maps and automatic mapping does not take that into consideration. There is another problem with certain faces should be connected as much as possible without having them to cause bleeding. So for example these faces that are facing one direction away from the light or that has a direction change from this face. These should be connected, which they are. And for example, these three faces should be connected as well. So when you have a direction change that will produce a light and shadow change as well, they should be separated along the edge and should have their own UV space within the UV layout. There is also has to be proper amount of padding between each UV shell to avoid bleeding of light and shadow. Now for this simple object automatic UV mapping will work and if I import it and test this in UDK so let me go ahead and export this and let's go to UDK and let's re-import. Let's take a look that we have the proper UV channel and here we have the automatic map UVs and the light map resolution which is set at 128 by 128 pixels uh, this should light pretty well. Here we have our object, light built, and it looks pretty good. I don't see any noticeable errors, and it's actually nicely lit. 
but it, again it does not take into consideration all those issues of padding between the shell, maximizing the UV space, and automatic mapping does not know what it's going to be used for. So the best and ideal way is to lay out your UVs for a light map manually as you would for a texturing. So to give you an example here is an object that has some more detail to it than just a simple wall with a few extrusions. Currently this object does not have any light map UVs. They're empty. So I'm going to go ahead and automatically map them. And you can see that it splits each individual shell and it does its best to kind of take each side of the object and map it together. But this is not the best way to have a light map channel for the object. This is going to produce a lot of errors and seams that it's going to be hard to fix. So the best way is just to start to UV your light map channel properly by manually laying them out. You can use automatic mapping to start with, but then you would have to attach certain things and certain objects together that face the same direction. And be more aware of how light and shadow will fall on that object and what will happen to that object when the light hits it. So this will not work for this object. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this object and bring back the original where the UVs for the light map were laid out manually. Now what I usually do, depending on the object, is I create a texturing set first and I manually lay out for texturing only and then I tend to copy the UV set onto a light map side so I have something to work with. And you can do so with copy current UV set to a new set. And then I have something to work with and I begin to break certain pieces and certain elements and put them in their own space. Now I've mentioned before that you have to be aware of how the light will fall on the object and where the shadows will be. So certain elements should not be connected and they should have their own unique UV space and separated in their own UV shell. So things that have a defined edge which will know that will cause a shadow and light separation and will have some cast shadow going along you'd want to have its own shell away from another 90 degree angle. So for example taking a look here these three should be connected together which they are right here and they should be separated and not connected to these three because of this 90 degree angle will create light and shadow separation. So things like that when you lay in out your UVs for the light map you have to take into consideration. Another aspect of UV light map that is very important is no overlapping of UVs. Each individual UV shell has to have their own defined unique space within the UV layout. So if you have some UV shells that are overlapping in order to maximize texture resolution this would be the ideal way to do so if you were laying out your UVs for texturing. You would overlap certain elements that have same texture but for a UV light map everything has to be uniquely placed within the 0-1 space of the UV layout. The easiest way to tell Amaya if you have anything overlapping is by clicking on toggle shaded UV display. And here you can see the color separation change will let you know if you have any UVs overlapping. Now let's see what happens when we do overlay some UVs on top of each other. Let's drag this on top and let's drag this one right over here and let's drag this one all over here. Let's export Reimport and build lighting. And we can tell the error comes up. It says object has overlapping UVs. And if we take a look at it, we can see that it produces light and shadow bleeds of other geometry, other UVs on top of areas we do not want. So no overlapping UVs for the light map channel. Next important element of creating your light maps is to have enough padding between each UV shell. Ideally you want to have between 2 and 4 pixels between. If you don't have proper padding between each UV shell, this will cause your light and shadow to bleed onto areas that you do not want. So to show you, let's take some UV shells and I'm just going to move them around and I'm going to get them very close to each other. And then we'll take a look at what that looks like. So here I took the light map UVs and I maximized them for maximum space. 
leaving almost nothing in between each shell. Back in your decay, let's re-import and build lighting. So here we are, if we take a look at it, we have some issues with light bleeding coming through here. There's some shadow coming through here. So there's a few issues with this mesh already. So proper padding will help you to avoid this light bleeding across your mesh. Now this sometimes is fixable by increasing the resolution of your light map. But ideally you don't want to increase the light map resolution and increasing texture memory. You want to fix the problem at its source by, give by giving enough spacing between each shell. Now currently if we go into a static mesh browser and click on our mesh, here we have light map resolution set to 128. This is 128 pixels by 128 pixels. For this size of the mesh and how close it will be to the player, this is a good size. You don't want to go too high. The larger the mesh, the larger the light map resolution may have to be, but you want to keep these values as low as possible. And you want to use the powers of 2. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. But compared to the texture resolution, light map resolution would tend to be a lot lower than textures. So let's bring this down to 64. And by decreasing the light map resolution, we have a lot more errors because the texture size of the light map has decreased. Now we could get away for this object with 64 by 64 light map resolution, but because we were not very careful of how we laid out our UVs and not given enough padding, we can't do that and we encounter more problems. So if I were to optimize this mesh and wanted to bring it down to 64, I couldn't do that because of the errors within the original source of the light map. So give enough padding, 2 to 4 pixels between each shell. So how would you know how many pixels is between each shell right here? The easiest way to do so is to match the light map resolution of the object and set up your grid inside UV texture editor to match the pixels. So one grid square would equal one pixel. So let me bring back the light map resolution that we had set before. Here we have it. And for this object we have resolution set at 64 by 64. So let's match 64 by 64 grid line. So we know how many pixels we need to have each of these shells separated from to avoid the bleeding issue. To do so it's really simple. You go up to view, grid, go to the option menu. And all you need to do is take one divided by how many grid lines you want. So if I want 64 this is the number that I need to copy and paste inside grid lines every so many units. Apply and close and if we take this, this is going to be 64 pixels or 64 grid lines across and down. And if we zoom in, we can see that we have two pixels here, two pixels here, everything is separated nicely and if we use this, everything should light correctly without any light bleeding. If you want a larger or smaller you do the same thing by taking 1 and divided by let's say 16. This, one, this is the value that you would input so control C, go to view and control V, apply and close. And this is 16 grid lines by 16 grid lines which will match 16 pixels by 16 pixels. So let's export this object. Let's re-import and take a look at how this looks after building lighting. And here we are, and we have very clean light and shadow at 64 by 64 pixels for the light map, which looks pretty good. And the last thing I want to leave you with is to study how UDK has laid out their UVs. So let's click on all assets, go to static meshes, and take a look at the static meshes that Epic has created. We can take a look at their UV layout for texturing and for a light map. So here's the column. Let's go to wireframe. Here is the light map channel. We can see that the light map resolution is set at 128. And we can switch over to the texturing channel, take a look at how this was laid out. Here we can take a look at more complex geometry and seeing how this object was laid out, where the elements were separated, where they were connected. And if we switch over to the texturing channel, 
we have quite a few overlapping UVs here to save some space for texturing and the layout for the light map. So in quick summary, you need to create a second UV light map channel that defines the UV light maps. They have to be uniquely laid out, no overlapping. There has to be enough padding, 2 to 4 pixels between each UV shell. And you have to take into consideration how the light and the shadow will interact with the object in order to separate certain UV shells and have them in their own unique UV space away not connected to other shells. Also making sure that matching the grid to the resolution that you're working with can help you a lot in dealing with how many pixels are in between each UV shell. And by often exporting and testing the object inside by building the light and seeing how it actually looks in game will help you to produce better light maps inside UDK. In the next tutorial I will cover a little bit more how to fix light map bleeding and light map seams.